Hi, my name is Caroline, and in this video, I'll show you how to create an automatic plant watering system. Here's a quick demo of my plant watering system. When the soil moisture falls below five, the water pump is automatically activated and then deactivated, and then we check the soil moisture again. Now let's get started. The items you'll need for this project, you will need, of course, your bonsai tree or plant of your choice. After some careful internet research, I realized that my bonsai tree is actually an outdoor tree, so this will be out on my patio. Now you'll also need a water pump, and this is the tubing that goes with the water pump, and you'll need some exposed wires, the positive and negative. Next, you'll need your capacitive soil moisture sensor and there are resistive ones. My understanding is that the resistive ones will corrode in a matter of days or weeks or just very quickly. So they recommend a capacitive moisture sensor. So I've got that. You will need your breadboard. I'm using an Arduino Uno. And of course, this is the cable that connects your Arduino with USB cable. I'm also gonna use a Raspberry Pi. And to power my Raspberry Pi, since my bonsai tree is an outdoor tree and I don't have any power outdoors, I'm going to use this power bank charger from Charmast that they sent to me. And I'm going to use a USB-C to power my Raspberry Pi 4. And of course, with my Raspberry Pi 4, I'll need dongles. I will need the mouse and the keyboard and the monitor to get started. Um, and then I will switch over to VNC later on in the presentation. So I can do this from a regular computer. And of course, my Raspberry Pi 4 is formatted with the Raspbian operating system on this micro SD card. We have our Raspberry Pi 4 and USB-C power adapter. Now to power the pump, I actually need a nine volt battery. And of course I need the way to connect the battery to my project. Now, what I had on hand was this. I've also seen this with just the red and black wire exposed. This plugs into this little module and I'll link to this below if you want one of these. And it's got a nice little on off switch as well. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's what I'll be using. And I will be using the five volt lead, which is only these two leads out of this device. And the way it works is it just simply pops into my breadboard. And the only thing I'm using is this side. This is a five volt side. I'm using the positive and the negative rails on this breadboard. Next to turn on and off the pump, I will need this relay. In order to get the wires into this relay, you'll need to put in two wires. You also need a small screwdriver. And of course, this project wouldn't be complete without a bunch of wires that we're going to connect. I used about five male to male wires and about three male to female jumper wires. I recommend just having a few extras on hand. There are a couple different ways you do this. You can solder all the wires together. You can put this in a nice container, which I will be doing in case it rains. You may also need some of these alligator clip wires to connect. You will need your wire cutter, wire stripper. There might not be enough margin here. And also if you want to solder this uh, project together, you'll need your soldering iron. And those are the main things you'll need for this project. Uh, just a side note, my capacitive soil moisture sensor and my relay and the pump actually came in one kit. And I will link to a single kit that has these three components included. Now let's go through the hardware assembly of this project. Most of the items will be connected to our Arduino. We're gonna start, and this is the relay, we're gonna connect the VCC on the relay to the five volt pin on the Arduino. Uh, so this is the VCC pin, so I will need a female to male connection. Let's look for the five volt connection on our Arduino, excellent. Next, we are gonna connect the ground from the relay to the negative rail of the breadboard. And once again, I will need a female to male so the ground pin on there to the ground rail of our breadboard. Excellent. And then I'm gonna connect the in on the relay to pin eight on the Arduino. So female to male connection in to pin number eight on the Arduino. Connect the black wire from the battery pack to the negative power rail of the breadboard. Okay, I have done that. 
connect the A out from the swole moisture sensor to the A0 of the Arduino. And this is the A out. It's a yellow wire, so I, I'm lucky to have another yellow wire. And that will connect to the A0 and log in on my Arduino. A out is going to the A0, and then the black wire, which is the ground, from the swell moisture sensor is going to ground on the Arduino. The VCC from the moisture sensor will go to the 3.3 volt on the Arduino. Okay. Now I'm gonna connect the red wire on the pump. And so this is where it might be good to have this alligator clip. Red wire on the pump to the NC on the relay. So I will need another wire. And here is the red wire and it's going into the NC on the relay. Thus, I will need to unscrew this and pop this wire to make that connection and then screw it back down. Next, I want to connect the red wire from the battery pack, which is connected to the red power panel. This is going from the power line of our breadboard, which is connected to the positive of the battery and we're going to connect that to COM1 on the relay. And once again, yes, I'll need to unscrew this a little bit, this back, and then screw this down. Okay, excellent. Connect the negative power rail from the breadboard to the ground on the Arduino. Connect the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi via U USB. I'm going to connect this. Connect the keyboard and the mouse. All right, so here's the dongle for the keyboard and the mouse. I can connect that to my Raspberry Pi. Connect the water tubing to the pump like this. Place the pump in a container of water. I'll be right back with some water. And I am connecting the negative terminal of the water pump to the negative rail on my breadboard. And I'm verifying, because I have a little switch here, I'm verifying that the water pump does work. All right, excellent. And then last but not least, we will power up our Pi. As I said, I'm using a power bank charger. And this is our setup. I'm gonna use something called VNC to get in to this Raspberry Pi. I know what my IP address, my internal IP address is. If you need to know that, I've got a different video where I figure out what the IP address is. The other part of this install is I have, I'm not gonna connect this now, I'm gonna connect this at the end, but I did 3D print a few stakes. I can aim the water at my bonsai tree instead of just all over the place. But to start, we're not gonna do that till the end of the project when we get it working. For right now, we're just gonna have the water circulate inside itself. That way we can just test if the water is on or off. And this is what you need, and we're gonna start the screen share next. And we're back. You should be able to see my screen. Now, this is my Raspberry Pi screen. And just wanted to point out, I am using VNC Viewer. If you're not familiar with VNC Viewer, I will link to it below. It is a free way, if you know your IP address, for you to use your Mac or your Windows computer to be able to see the screen on your Raspberry Pi without having to hook up a keyboard and mouse and monitor. And this will become key later on in this presentation in that I will use my computer so I can monitor the level of the Arduino of the soil moisture sensor through the Raspberry Pi through VNC on my computer and that way I can be indoors uh, monitoring uh, what's going on outdoors. I'm going to start by opening up my Chromium browser and going to GitHub to get the code. So it's GitHub and Caroline Dunn. Of course, I will link to this below. From my page on GitHub, I'll go into the repositories. And this is the plant watering repository, the one you're looking for. Of course, I'll link directly to this. I'll make it a little bit easier. And I've got the readme and I've got all the items you'll need. I just went over that. And here is the hardware assembly we just went through. And Next, we are going to install our Arduino IDE on our Raspberry Pi. It's a good practice to do sudo apt-get update, sudo apt-get upgrade before you do this. Copy, paste, and I've already done that, so hopefully this will just be a very quick exercise. We have updated, upgraded our Raspberry, just good everyday practices. Now we're going to install the Arduino application on our Raspberry Pi. Now this is just one simple command that you need to run. You need to run and I will paste this in, sudo apt install Arduino. This is gonna error out for me because I've already installed it on my computer, but once you finish installing this on your Raspberry Pi, you just have to hit the Raspberry, 
go to programming and Arduino IDE should come right up. And the first thing we want to do is we want to verify that our Raspberry Pi is connected correctly to our Arduino. All right, so I'm gonna to go to File, Examples, and then Basics, and then Blink. And I'm going to run this on our Arduino. The LED on our Arduino should start blinking very slowly. And there it goes we can see the light blinking on our Arduino. We know that it's working. Now, if it's not working, some things you can try are you can go to Tools, Board, make sure that Arduino Uno is selected or whatever Arduino you have decided to use. I'm using an Arduino Uno, so that's correct. And then Serial Port, you wanna make sure that your Serial Port is selected. Try that, and that is step number one. You've gotta make sure that your Arduino and your Raspberry Pi are talking to each other through this Arduino sketch. We've got that working, yay. All right, that is step two. We know that it's working. Next, step three. We want to test our soil moisture sensor and calibrate it. So we'll start a new project in our Arduino IDE, and we're gonna copy the water.ino code, and that is in this repository here, water.ino and I'm gonna hit raw so I can get all the, and we're just gonna copy, copy, go into our sketch and hit paste. And I am going to upload this to our Arduino. The point of this is to get our capacitor working. All right, it's done uploading. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to tools, serial monitor, and let's see if it reads from the sensor. Okay, so it's completely dry, it's a negative six. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick it in the water if I stick this in the water, it suddenly, the moisture suddenly gets to 41%. Of course, moisture is incorrectly spelled. I will need to fix that before I release this video, but you kind of get the idea. You take it out, it's negative, you put it back in, it's positive. All right, so I have verified that the moisture does work. So all we're trying to do is verify that this sensor works correctly. So if you, if it doesn't work correctly, then yeah, you wanna go check everything. Your sensor could be defective. We go back to tools, serial monitor, and you should be able to, uh, yes, 42%. And if I take it out of the water, then it drops to negative 1%. We'll take that out of the water for now and we will stop this. Next, let's go back to our GitHub and go back to our plant watering. Now we're gonna check to see if we can tie in the pump. You wanna go and you want to start a new project and you wanna copy the code from our soilfinal.ino and you're gonna go through the same process. We are going to salt soil watering ino raw. I'm going to copy everything, copy, and I'm gonna start a new sketch, file new and paste, and we are going to upload this to our Arduino. All right, so now first thing we're gonna do is open tools and open serial monitors. So I can check this out. And on mine, I've got this little switch to make sure that the pump doesn't just automatically pump. So if I'm gonna turn this on, and look, the pump is on. See the water coming out, recycling the water within, just so I don't get water everywhere. If I put the capacitor in, then you'll notice it turns off. Now I've verified the pump works. We kind of need to calibrate, figure out, okay, when do I want the water to go on? When do I want the water to go off? How long? And this is where you kind of can update the code a little bit so that it works the way you want it to work. We take it out and, and the pump comes back on. Look at that, so I'll put it in, take it out. Right now it's checking every one second and if there's no water, then it pumps water. So it's gonna pump water for a long time until it feels like your soil is wet enough. Well, I'm gonna stick it in the soil now, and we're gonna to try to calibrate this thing. In the soil, and it's best to kind of start when it's kind of dry, so it says the soil moisture is at 3%. All right, so we do want some water. Looking in our code, our threshold is eight, so when it's below eight, which it's at three right now, we do wanna water it. When it's above eight, we wanna not water it. This is best to do outdoors. I, in practice, before I started this video, it just went crazy, and I just got water all over the place. I'm going to adjust these values so that when it's completely watered, it stops. The other thing I did was there's also a line in here called delay 300,000. That delays it for five minutes. That way I'm only checking once every five minutes instead of once you know, every second like I'm doing right now. You wanna run the pump for one second. Maybe we check for five minutes and if the water's a little bit low, we run the pump for one second 
and then we check it again in five minutes and that way it kind of gives uh, time for the water to be absorbed by the soil and we're just going to water just a little bit at a time you want to uncomment delay 3000 then comment delay 1000 and that way it only checks once every five minutes we determine what value is the correct value that works best for you then you would save and you would upload the sketch again and then you'll be able to see how this works i can move this outside i'm uploading this again and then now i'm going to go into tools i'm going to go into serial monitor and now i can monitor this from my computer where i'm doing the screen record and then have this setup that you see here. I can have that outside. I'm probably gonna put it into a nice little container. And I have moved my setup outdoors out on my patio. This is a scrapbooking container, plastic container here, and it keeps the rain out in case it's raining. See my breadboard, my switch, my nine volt battery, Arduino, the Raspberry Pi, and a power bank charger, USB-C to power my Raspberry Pi. And then here we go, here's the pump. And of course, very importantly, here is my bonsai tree. And if you notice, I drilled a tiny hole into the side of my scrapbooking case and I'm feeding all the wires through the scrapbooking case. And now I can close this scrapbooking case. And, uh, that just keeps my electronics dry, starts raining on my patio. My patio is covered by the way. And that is the setup of my project on my patio. For the purposes of the demo here, I have changed the wait time to from five minutes to about 10 seconds. Now we are ready to check to see if this works. Now it reads that the moisture is at 4% and because it's below 5%, it turns on a second and then it should stop. All right, moisture 4%. There it goes, pump on for one second and then pump off. And then it's gonna wait 10 seconds before it checks again. It is working as planned. I've got my moisture sensor here. I've got the pump working. Okay, now it says that the moisture is at 10% and it is not turning on the pump. Okay, perfect. It's gotten enough moisture at this point. It is not turning on the pump. Moisture 10%, do not turn on the pump. And here is the final configuration. I have my nine volt battery, my breadboard, my Arduino, power bank is now connected directly to the Arduino and the relay. And of course the soil sensor is plugged in and I've got my uh, pump uh, water filtering in. Now it only checks every five minutes and if it needs water, then it will uh, pump out water for one second and then wait five minutes to pump out more water. I'm super excited about my new bonsai treat. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye now.